Good afternoon, everyone. Please take a seat. And it is a special honor for me to be able to say, welcome to the White House. And welcome especially to the 2023 International Women of Courage Award Ceremony to all of you participating here in person uh, and tuning in from around the world. For 17 years now, U.S. Secretaries of State have recognized International Women of Courage who are leading the charge for progress around the world. This year, for the first time, we honor the awardees here at the White House. And that really is a reflection of just how highly President Biden, First Lady, and this administration prioritize gender equality and human rights. Uh, Dr. Biden, thank you for bringing us here today. Uh, but thank you more than that for everything that you're doing every single day to be such a remarkable role model to so many women around the world and for your incredibly tireless efforts to lift up the voices of brave women everywhere around the world. So we're joined today by ambassadors from across the globe who are essential partners in all of our efforts to make sure that women and girls can reach their full potential. We have senior leaders from across the United States government here, Ambassador Linda Thomas-Greenfield, our champion, our voice at the United Nations. Deputy Secretary of Defense, Kath Hicks, Under Secretary of State, Arzazea, our advocate for human rights. Jen Klein, Kat Fotovat, who are leaders of our global gender policy. Uh, and of course, White House Press Secretary, Karine Jean-Pierre, also such a powerful voice for our country uh, and for this administration around the world. And I also want to point out our team from the Bureau for Educational and Cultural Affairs. We're working with so many of you every single day in the work that you're doing. Uh, we're also joined by members of the State Department's locally employed staff. Um, they're literally the lifeblood of our missions in every country in the world. Uh, to be here today, some of them have traveled from more than a dozen countries in Asia, Africa, Europe, South America, and the Middle East. It's wonderful to be with you today as well. Thank you. And in the audience, we have several previous winners of the International Women of Courage Award who are continuing their inspiring work. And the First Lady and I had an opportunity yeah. to uh, greet them, uh, to be able to say in person what we were not able to do the last couple of years, which is congratulations and thank you for the incredible work that you're doing. And of course, last but not least, our guests of honor, this year's International Women of Courage. Welcome to all of you. When Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice launched this initiative in 2007, she did so to honor women creating brighter futures for themselves, for their communities, and for generations to come. Since then, this award has recognized more than 180 women from over 80 countries around the world. And that includes this year's honorees, 11 truly extraordinary people. Um, as you'll hear, these women are reporting on Russian atrocities in Ukraine. They're fighting for equal opportunities for women and girls in Mongolia. They're defending democracy in the Central African Republic. They're protecting indigenous land in Costa Rica. They're advocating for the rights of refugees, people with disabilities, the LGBTQI plus community. Because of their work, and even uh, as they do it every single day, uh, they are faced with extraordinary challenges that as you learn about them, read about them, are humbling. Uh, they, their loved ones in many cases, have endured harassment. They've endured violence. Some have been imprisoned. Others have been subject of misinformation and online attacks, day in, day out. And yet, each and every one has refused to be intimidated. In every region, there are other women doing this work who we can't name individually, uh, in some cases because the attention would put them at even greater risk. So we found a new way to honor them. Uh, this year, we're launching a group award named after a pioneer and champion of equality, 
the great Secretary of State, Madeleine Albright. We have... We have um, several members of the Albright family uh, here today to help us celebrate. I like to think I'm an extended member of that family. Um, for me, as I've, as I've told um, our friends, uh, I hear Madeleine Albright's voice in my head on a regular basis. The clarity with which she spoke and what she said continues to resonate and continues to inspire me in the work uh, that I and my team are doing. But you're, you honor us with your presence today. Thank you for being here. Around the world, uh, women in all of their diversity are often the ones on the front lines of change. And yet at the same time, they face still greater obstacles to their political participation. They experience gender-based violence and human rights abuses. They hold less economic and social power. We are committed to changing that. Defending the rights of women and girls is rooted in our democratic values of human rights and fundamental freedoms for all. And when we advance equality, and defend the rights of women, we improve life for everyone. When peace is forged with the participation and the leadership of women, it's more likely to last. We know this from experience. Closing the gender gap in the global workforce would add $28 trillion to the global economy. And as Secretary Albright once said, we simply cannot build the future that we want without the contribution of women. That's why President Biden has made gender equality and women's rights a priority of our foreign policy. Uh, as some of you know, we recently launched the first ever cross-government strategy on women's global economic security to try to help reduce the enduring wage gap, to improve access to well-paying jobs, to dismantle barriers to women's economic participation. In December, the United States also updated our strategy to prevent and respond to gender-based violence globally, including new efforts to expand access to programs for historically marginalized communities. We're also learning from and teaming up with governments, civil society, the private sector, and other countries to work toward gender equality together, including, of course, the women that we're honoring today. One of those women, Hadila Belaziz, noted that when it comes to advancing this struggle, success is not about one big act, not about one big act of heroism, but 100 small battles. To our honorees, the United States is proud to be by your side as you and others wage those 100 small battles, day in, day out, and we will be there and be there with you for the long haul. That includes, of course, the First Lady of the United States, Dr. Jill Biden. Thank you. The First Lady. <laughs> Thank you. And thank you, Secretary Blinken. Tony, when Joe selected you to be Secretary of State, he knew that we had much to do abroad, from putting diplomacy at the center of foreign policy to rebuilding our global partnerships. And with every challenge we faced, you have ensured that we're better able to deliver for the American people because we have our allies by our side. Your integrity and statesmanship have helped us rally countries to stand with Ukraine against Russia's war of aggression, strengthen our ability to respond to future health emergencies, and confront the climate crisis. Thank you for all that you do. As the Secretary said, we are joined by leaders from around our country and across the globe. So to all of the members of the Diplomatic Corps here, thank you for joining us today. And uh, as the Secretary said, the family of the incomparable Secretary Albright is with us, and I'm going to ask you to stand. And they all claim to help us carry on her legacy. And we have our Gender Policy Council, the first of its kind, and other leaders from across our administration. 
This audience is a testament to our national commitment to gender equality around the globe and the powerful influence of the people we honor today, women of courage. Right here in the East Wing, we will tell their stories of fearlessness, resilience, and hope. We will hear from them in their own words. And there are people outside of this room who need to hear their stories too. The girls who will inherit this world. The future engineer who loves exploring, who sees magic in mechanics and technologies that connect us to each other, but is told, there's no place for you in the classroom. The future president or prime minister who is told that her voice is too loud or too bossy or too feminine, whatever that means. <laughs> the child who lives in fear. The star who is told to hide her light. The girl who feels the smallness of the world closing in, afraid that her dreams are just too big to carry alone. Again and again and again, they wake up to find a world made for someone else and watch their brothers and their fathers and their uncles and their neighbors rise and grow while they are told to shrink, told that they're not good enough, not strong enough, not worthy of the lives that they dream about. But today, we're here to tell girls everywhere the truth that they need to hear. Yes, you matter. Yes, you can make a difference. And that's why we wanted to bring the leaders we're honoring today and the stories that they share to the biggest stage we could, the White House. And Tony, thank you for helping us do that. Girls everywhere need to know that there are women fighting for them and winning, opening doors, transforming schools and communities and governments, building a better world for all of us. And we're also here to say to their brothers and their fathers and their husbands and their friends, as much as we need women who are willing to speak up, we need more men who are willing to listen and act. We need more men to hold each other accountable when their sisters are being hurt or left behind. We need more men who nurture families, who feed and teach and mentor, who build safer communities. We need more men who know that caring, collaboration, and kindness are signs of strength, not weakness. Men, we need you to support the women who are fighting for their rights and to lift up those who have been silenced. Be partners, be partners with women. Become the men of courage we need. Only then will we be able to build a world where men and women are equal and all people are free. So to all the women whom we are honoring today, know that the um, enormous good you've done has no end. It touches every person who hears your story. It transforms us with new hope. As you seek justice, speak out, and pursue peace, you inspire others to find courage within ourselves and rise to that same call. And to every little girl who has wondered, can I, one person, one voice, one girl, fix what's broken? Let the women that we celebrate today be an answer to that question, an unequivocal yes. When you learn 
and explore, when you raise your voice, when you move through the world with your shoulders back and your head held high, step by step, you shift the ground beneath you. Draw strength from the women of courage who came before you. Share that strength with the sisterhood that surrounds you. And the ripples of that power will transform our world. And as you take those steps, as you grow into the women you will be, remember, you are never alone. Thank you. Please welcome Under Secretary for Civilian Security, Democracy, and Human Rights at the U.S. Department of State, Azra Zaya. It takes courage to seek justice when the powerful stand against you. Laws can protect the innocent or persecute the oppressed. And when the rule of law becomes a tool of tyranny, or when the structures in place simply fail to live up to the promise of equality, fairness, and humanity, we appeal to a higher ideal, justice. The women we honor today have worked tirelessly to ensure that their nation's legal systems protect all people, no matter their gender, beliefs, or background. And when those systems cannot or will not protect every citizen, they have fought to transform them. They've broken barriers, risen to new heights, and inspired other young women to follow their lead. Because without women's rights, perspectives, and what it bullied what Stilia Kazakhstani, and we denimaim se prodvijeni praf is labot chilaveka, v oblasti politichki praf is labot. And now, Dr. Biden and Secretary Blinken will present the awards. As the first woman to lead the Central African Republic's Constitutional Court, Danielle Darlan became known as the Woman of Iron for her refusal to be intimidated. She spent her career working to ensure the law delivers justice to all, no matter their background. And in the face of enormous pressure to allow the president to rewrite the Constitution to give himself an illegal third term, she refused, <laughs> sacrificing her career to safeguard the rule of law. As founder and executive director of Jordan's Justice Center for Legal Aid, Hadil Abdel Aziz provides legal services to thousands of people every year who wouldn't otherwise have access to a lawyer. She works to educate people about their rights so that they know how to protect themselves and are empowered to do so. During political unrest in Kazakhstan, which resulted in deaths and credible reports of torture, longtime civil rights advocate Bahidzan Toregozina used phone calls to expose human rights violations during an internet blackout. She then founded a coalition to document violations and provide legal and mental health support to victims of torture and abuse. Please join me once more in congratulating these incredible women. Please welcome Deputy Secretary of Defense, Kathleen Hicks. It takes courage to seek peace when you are the target of violence. When wars are waged, 
when authoritarians seek to consolidate power, when conflict uproots and displaces families, women and girls shoulder many of the costs and consequences. Those who wish to harm and turn their violence on women and girls often do so because women and girls serve as a society's source of strength and a beacon of hope. It's because when women use their voices to speak out against authoritarianism, their leadership can create lasting democratic change. When women use their voices to stand up for what's right against overwhelming odds, their voices can reverberate around the world. And when women have a seat at the table, they hold the power to lead their communities toward peace and prosperity. And that's the truth. Studies show that when women participate in peace negotiations, these talks are more likely to come to a just settlement and result in lasting stability. Peace is possible when we support the women working to make it a reality, by stopping conflicts before they begin, by addressing the root causes of discrimination and violence, and by working to end wars that have already begun and mitigating their harm. So today, we salute several women leaders who are exhibiting extraordinary courage to seek peace when they themselves are the targets of violence. Women who are using their strength to pursue gender equity and equality in the face of extreme cruelty and hate. Women who are fighting for dignity and freedom for not just themselves, but for others. In our awardees, we see that our capacity for understanding and healing is stronger than the forces that try to tear us apart. And we are reminded that women belong everywhere the decisions are made. The love, the respect that my students gives me was my courage to stand for the voiceless women and children. Persons with disabilities or PWDs have the right to have good conditions in the workplace, to live independently, to equal opportunities, to participate fully in the life of their community. All of us have a right to a life without barriers and it is our obligation as a community to ensure their full participation in society on an equal basis with others. Thanks to my work in Well Known Morning Show, I was able to collect a large amount of humanitarian aid, which I carried to the front line, and I'm doing this till today. When the Russians entered in Krim, I started to tactical medicine. І з цими курсами поїхала на фронт, зрозуміла, що допомога потрібна саме там. On behalf of Dr. Biden and Secretary Blinken, I'm honored to present awards to the following women. In Mongolia, Brigadier General Bolar Gonbold is the first female staff officer in her country to be assigned to United Nations peacekeeping operation. <laughs> and the first female general to serve in the Mongolian Armed Forces. Brigadier Ganbold has served in peacekeeping missions around the world and she's advocated for gender equality in peacekeeping forces and her country's military so that women and girls can be properly protected during and after conflicts. In Costa Rica, Doris Rios has dedicated her life to fighting for indigenous women's rights to life and dignity and for the reclamation of indigenous lands. In the face of threats of violence and attacks against her and her family, she has created a seat at the table for indigenous women to make the world more peaceful and just. In Argentina, Alba Ruada is a transgender woman who was kicked out of classrooms, barred for sitting for exams, refused job opportunities, subjected to violence, and rejected by her family. 
But in the face of these challenges, she worked to end violence and discrimination against the LGBTQI plus community in Argentina. After women were barred from schools in Afghanistan, Zakira Hakmet secretly finished high school and won a scholarship to study in Turkey, eventually becoming a doctor. After seeing the difficulty refugees face, she founded the Afghan Refugee Solidarity Association to advocate for the rights of all refugees and women. It is my privilege and honor to to, uh, to honor each of you for your important, co important contributions to human rights and for making the world a more peaceful place. Congratulations and thank you for your courage. Please welcome White House Press Secretary Corinne Jean-Pierre. It takes courage to speak when those in power want, to stay, want you to stay silent. In a world where lies and distortion are easy to sell, one of the most powerful weapons that we have is the truth. Because corruption thrives in darkness, dictators and authoritarians seek to control criticism and define the stories that we tell. They threaten journalists and those who speak out, so they can control knowledge and hide their crimes. Selling their people false stories of peace and success. But when we illuminate the shadows, we can expose the damage they create, lighting a path forward for those trapped in the dark with the knowledge and the strength to rise and demand change. This group of journalists, broadcasters, and war correspondents spread truth, courage, and empower other women and girls to use their voices for democracy, freedom, and justice. Depending on the country, how much women are participating in the armed forces or in the military, but in the generally around the uh, world, there are around 15 to 20 percent of the women in the armed forces. Being a woman in the military is a kind of broadly job, and the same as a man. Yo creo que los logros más importantes, primero, creo que es la recuperación de nuestras tierras. Y a raíz de esas las recuperaciones de esas tierras, que hoy hablemos de seguridad alimentaria, de economía, de salud y acceso a nuestros recursos naturales. Estoy en la representación especial sobre orientación sexual e identidad de género en la Cancillería Argentina y este cargo es un compromiso para una política exterior transfeminista que ha crecido a la luz de políticas públicas a través de una agenda de activismos dentro del de Estado que permite también desarrollar eh, políticas públicas a partir de leyes de vanguardia que hay en, en, en Argentina. I believe that everyone in society has a role to play in promoting equality and justice. And I know that my journey has just begun. And once again, Dr. Biden and Secretary Blinken will present the awards. Through her independent YouTube news channel, Roja TV, veteran Ethiopian journalist Mihaza Mohamed shares stories of those who are often silenced. Despite three arrests in under one year, she continued to raise her voice advocating for survivors of gender-based violence and urging accountability for crimes committed against them. While helping evacuate women and children from areas affected by war, Ukrainian military veteran Yula Payevska secretly documented Russian forces committed atrocities during the 2022 siege of Mariupol.
She smuggled a memory card to the Associated Press and a tampon and was forced to destroy another with her teeth before being captured by Russian forces and tortured for information. Since her release, she has continued to raise her voice for her people, pushing for peace and independence for Ukraine. Now, as a broadcaster, journalist Raz Adiba Radzi became a household name after a car accident and brutal assault permanently paralyzed her from the waist down. She used her platform to advocate for the rights of persons with disabilities, first as a reporter and now as a senator in Malaysia's parliament and the first female chair of the national Malaysian news agency, Bernama. While Polish journalist Bianca Zaleska was combating Russian dis misinformation in 2014, her car was shot, causing accident that broke her spine. Since the Russian invasion of Ukraine last year and in the face of intimidation and death threats, she continues her work documenting war crimes, lifting up stories of refugees, and training other journalists to effectively counter misinformation. Please join me in a round of applause for all of our awardees. Please welcome U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Linda Thomas-Greenfield. Hello, everyone. It really is a privilege to present this new award, one that honors our first female Secretary of State, the late Madeleine Albright. Secretary Albright showed so many women, including myself, how to lead with moral clarity and with courage. Her legacy lives on in those still fighting for gender equality and universal human rights. It is fitting that this award recognizes not just one woman, but the bravery, the fortitude, and collaboration of a whole movement. It speaks to the outsized impact of Secretary Albright's example and life of service. When the Albright family, <clears throat> who is here with us today, learned about this award, they asked that another trailblazing leader, one who knew Secretary Albright well, be part of this ceremony, Secretary Condoleezza Rice. Secretary Rice created the International Women of Courage Award in 2007. And though she couldn't join us today, she wanted to take part in this very special ceremony. I am humbled to be able to join you today to honor an extraordinary group of women, the female protesters of Iran, with the Madeleine Albright Honorary Group Award. Since the horrific death of Masa Amani, while in the custody of Iran's so-called morality police, Women in Iran led protests across the country's 31 provinces and sparked months of grassroots support for women's rights. It is only fitting, then, that their persistence and dedication is being honored in the name of my late friend, Madeleine Albright. Madeleine was a fierce fighter for human rights, for women's rights, and for gender equality around the world. She organized foreign ministers, women foreign ministers, to speak out about abuses in hidden corners of the globe. She made a difference in her commitment to gender policy. We talked often about it. I tried to do the same as Secretary of State. She was a fighter for equality. I am honored 
to congratulate the women of Iran with the Madeleine Albright Honorary Group Award. Thank you for your bravery, compassion, and resilience. You make all women proud. And, and I wish they could be here to hear your applause. I'm proud to present the Madeleine K. Albright Honorary Group International Women of Courage Award. This inaugural award goes to women and girls in Iran who in the wake of the brutal killing of Masa Amini have inspired us all. All Masa wanted was to live a normal and happy life. She dreamed of starting a family after finishing her studies. But these hopes and dreams were crushed. They were crushed by the tyranny of Iran's so-called morality police. The Iranian government probably thought this would just be another footnote in the long record of violence and discrimination against women. But this time, this time it was different. The Iranian people, led by women, took to the streets in peaceful protest. They followed in the footsteps of brave women before them who sacrificed so much in the name of freedom. Through neighborhoods and classrooms, out of apartment buildings and car windows, the protesters chanted throughout Iran and around the world, creating a global chorus chorus demanding gen gender equality and human rights. But for all the hope this movement represents, we must never forget how the Iranian regime has responded. They have tortured peaceful protesters. They have arrested tens of thousands of people. They have badly injured and killed Iranians in bloody crackdowns. The international community must continue to condemn the regime's repression and violence, and we must back up our words with action. That's why the United States led a successful effort to remove Iran from the UN Commission on the Status of Women. And it's why we are working to hold those complicit in these abuses accountable. To all the women and girls across Iran, know this, we will continue to stand with you in your fight for women, for life, and for freedom. So everyone, please join me in recognizing the courageous women and girls in Iran. Thank you. I now have the honor of introducing another courageous woman who has been an unwavering champion for vulnerable populations in Malaysia. When a car accident and a brutal assault paralyzed Senator Rasta Adiba Razi from the waist down, she dedicated her life to advocacy. To raise awareness, Malaysians across the country saw her on TV, in Parliament, and at the Paralympics. They heard her commentary. They heard her poetry. They heard her fierce call for justice. In May 2020, she became Malaysia's representative for people with disabilities. And later that year, she was appointed the first female chair of the Malaysian National News Agency. Senator Ross Adiba Razi embodies, she embodies what it means to live a life in service to others. Please join me in welcoming, welcoming her to the podium.
Assalamu alaikum, or peace be upon you. I'm Senator Rasa Dibaradzi, a representative of the 2023 International Women of Courage Award. Before I begin, I would like to thank the First Lady, Dr. Jill Biden, the Secretary of State, Anthony J. Blinken, and the US Department of State for giving me the opportunity to speak today. I'd have to say that I'm thoroughly impressed by the amazing work done by my fellow finalists in the respective countries. Let's give them a big hand. <laughs> Among others, I am joined by women who are fighting against gender-based violence for the rights of indigenous persons and for the rule of law. Honorable guests, I was born able-bodied and became permanently paralyzed from the waist down after several incidents. I became a spinal cord injured person following a car accident in 1995, a brutal assault a year later, and finally in 2002 when I fell after climbing a ladder. Since then, I have committed my life to fighting for the rights of persons with disabilities in my country, Malaysia. I witnessed discrimination and stigma as a person with disabilities, and then on, my team and I fought and fought and fought. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been working tirelessly to create awareness on the importance of accessibility in infrastructure, disability inclusion, job opportunities, inclusive education, housing, and upholding our rights, among others. I and my team then founded an association to empower persons with disabilities called OKU Central. In May 2020, the Malaysian King, His Majesty the King, Al Sultan Abdullah, appointed me as a senator in the Upper House Parliament of Malaysia to represent persons with disabilities. In November 2020, I was appointed the first female chair of the Malaysian National News Agency, Bernama, after 53 years of its establishment. Distinguished guests, in the area of sustainable development, all of us here aim to create a world which is inclusive, equitable, and sustainable, a world in which no one is left behind, and opportunities be made available for all for a secure, stable, and successful nation. Without the role and contribution of women, a nation will not be able to progress as it is today. It is vital for all parties to respect the contribution of women in all areas, economy, social, politics, and culture. Women's involvement is crucial as they are an important asset to a country. So let's again give a big round of applause, and actually I feel like hugging them all, <laughs> especially to women here and to women all across the world who have excelled in their roles and contributed towards a prosperous nation worldwide. We are at a pivotal moment for women's rights. For us, receiving this International Women of Courage Award is very, very much significant for our people in each of our countries. This will be an integral part of spreading awareness and will celebrate the activism and transformative power of women and girls. Honorable guests, the op this opportunity is indeed an honor for me to share my views and experience, especially concerning the protection and social participation of persons with disabilities in Malaysia with everyone here today. Despite the increasing awareness around persons with disabilities, there is no denial that there's discrimination. In this polarized world, exists to the detriment of our disabled friends. It exists because of a prevailing mindset, a stereotypical way of looking at the disabled. What the community needs to understand and to accept is that persons with disabilities are entitled to the full range of civil, cultural, economic, political, and social rights, as stated in various human rights instruments, the same as everyone else. On that note, and as we speak, the Malaysian government is in the midst of amending the Persons with Disabilities Act 2008 to have an anti-discrimination act for persons with disabilities 
like the United Kingdom's. and the Americans with Disability Act 1990, or ADA. Esteemed guests, raising awareness of basic human rights and the right to be free of discrimination among women, children, and persons with disabilities is the fundamental aspect in which we must continue to work on. Without such awareness, it is extremely difficult to bring about justice and change. The increasing number of hate crimes racist remarks and instances of ableist behavior shows that we must act quickly to protect the most vulnerable communities. Hence, I would like to take this opportunity to call on the 195 governments of the day in the world to ensure that the marginalized and vulnerable groups, women, children, including persons with disabilities, are not left out and rise to the clarion call of the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda, leave no one, no one behind. Before I end my speech, I'd like to acknowledge the late Judith Human, a leader in the disability community, advocating for persons with disabilities, and has been the mother of the disability rights movements since the 70s. We will miss her terribly. But myself and the rest of us, I promise you, will continue to be her voice. As she puts it, we are leaders of inclusiveness and community, of love, equity, and justice. Honorable guests, me standing here today in my standing wheelchair <laughs> means a whole lot, especially for my countryman, Malaysia. So I'd like to say in Malay, Sejuta doa mencapai bintang, which means a million prayers has now reached the skies. Terima kasih, or thank you, for this honour, and from the bottom of my heart. Salam alaikum. Please welcome Acting Ambassador at Large for Global Women's Issues at the U.S. Department of State, Kat Fotovat. What an honor it is to close out such a historic day, such a historic event. Happy International Women's Day to all those around the world and to our amazing women of courage we honor today. What an incredible ceremony. I must say I am rendered nearly speechless by the Senator's remarks. Your resilience, determination, and grit in the face of extreme adversity and your resolve to continue to fight for women's rights as human rights to achieve a better future for us is both humbling and energizing. I couldn't also help but think of my dear friend and personal hero, Judy Human, whose funeral I attended just this morning. Judy was a leader of the international disability rights movement who said, I simply refused to accept what I was told about who I could be, and I was willing to make a fuss about it. <laughs> Through your work, Senator, and the work of all of our awardees, Judy's legacy of defending the rights and communities facing discrimination will live on. You and all of our International Women of Courage awardees are truly inspirational for your courage, and as Judy noted, to make a fuss about it. I am so honored to be here at the White House today to join First Lady Dr. Jill Biden, Secretary Blinken, and the other distinguished speakers who joined us to pay tribute to the recipients of the Secretary of State 2023 International Women of Courage Awards. The IWALK Award is truly a centerpiece and guiding force behind my office's work to lead the Department of State's efforts to promote the rights and empowerment of women and girls worldwide, and it is a cornerstone of U.S. foreign policy and assistance. Today, our awardees join a truly incredible group of more than 180 women from more than 80 countries who have received the International Women of Courage Award since 2007. In recognition of the exceptional courage, strength, and leadership 
all of you have shown advocating for peace, justice, human rights, and gender equity and equality, often at great personal risk and sacrifice. I hope this award will elevate your advocacy work and bring a greater international attention to the issues that you are fighting for. Every day as my colleagues and I carry out our mission, working with our partners to prevent and respond to gender-based violence, advance women's economic security, and promote the women, peace, and security agenda across the globe, we draw inspiration from fearless women's rights champions like the courageous women who are, we are uh, gathered here to honor today, and also from their advocates, defenders, their family members, government allies, civil society leaders, and journalists who are also in this room today championing gender equity and equality, not just in words, but in action. Today on International Women's Day, the U.S. government reaffirms our commitment to the safety and full participation of women and girls in decision making at all levels and as foundational to peace, stability, and economic growth of all nations. I'd also like to quote Secretary Albright, who said, it took me a long time to develop a voice, and now that I have it, I am not going to be silent. <laughs> To our 2023 Courage Awards, thank you again for using your voices and being the voice for those who can't use theirs. Let us all commit to using our voices to amplify those facing oppression, crisis, and in conflict in places like Iran, Ukraine, and Afghanistan, and all over the world. Congratulations to our awardees, and thank you for all you have done to give women and girls everywhere a fighting chance. We stand with you and for you. And thank you everyone here today joining us to celebrate these truly amazing and courageous women. Happy International Women's Day. Thank you all.